Hello students, Dr. Kale here to talk with you about arguments. Today we'll discuss deductive arguments and inductive arguments and how to tell the difference between the two. We will also discuss the concepts of validity, soundness, strength, and cogency. First off, we need to discuss statements. A statement is any sentence with a truth value. For example, it's sunny outside, or my shirt is white, or we have two moons around the planet Earth. Each one of these sentences has a truth value. It's either true or false. Not all sentences are statements. For, for instance, uh, ouch, or hello, or what's wrong? None of these, uh, none of these sentences uh, have a truth value. They're not true or false. They have some other purpose in the human language. So statements are sentences with a truth value, and arguments are a group of state, or an argument is a group of statements in which one or more of the statements are purportedly reasons to believe one or more of the others. So you have a group of statements and some of them are supposed to provide evidence for one or more of the others. The statements that provide evidence are called the premises of the arguments. These are the statements that provide reasons to believe. And the conclusion, the conclusion is the statement that is supposed to be supported by the evidence. Uh, so, uh, for example, I may say something like this, Rochester's temperature has gotten down to at least 25 degrees Fahrenheit every winter for the past 50 years. Therefore, this winter, the temperature will probably reach at least 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a simple argument. It has two statements. The first is the premise, and the second is the conclusion. The first provides evidence for the second. Since Rochester has had uh, temperatures 25 degrees Fahrenheit or below for the last 50 years, it's likely that this winter will be no different. Uh, so we've got one statement providing evidence uh, for the other. Now, how can we tell the difference between premises and conclusions? Uh, the first way is just by using our intuitions. If I gave you those two statements, I think uh, just by reflection, you would see that the first was meant to provide reasons for the second. Uh, when we're asking what is the conclusion of the argument, the question we're really asking is, what's the main point of this argument? What is the author's purpose in saying these things? Um, when we ask the question, what are the premises, we're asking, what reasons or evidence was the author giving to encourage us to believe the conclusion? Uh, let me give you another example uh, of an argument. Uh, the Steelers um, winning the Super Bowl. Quarterback Ben Roethlisberger is healthier than he has ever been. And the Steelers always have good seasons after they miss the playoffs, as they did last year. Therefore, the Steelers will win the Super Bowl this year. Okay, so we have three uh, sentences in this argument, three statements. Um, two are premises and one is a conclusion. First, Ben Roethlisberger is healthier than he has ever been. That's the first premise. The second premise is that the Steelers always have a good season after they had a bad season. And then the conclusion, the thing to be proven, is the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. Now, I might just discover that, or discover by intuition, that those are the premises, and the latter is the conclusion, uh, by asking, what's the main point of the argument? And clearly, I intend to persuade you, and myself, since I'm a fan, that the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. Another way of finding what the premises and conclusions of an argument are is by looking at indicator words. Uh, if you look in your text, uh, there are um, lists of indicator words for premises and lists of indicator words for conclusions. Uh, and it's important to be familiar with these indicator words because whenever there's an argument 
where it's not quite clear what the premises and conclusion are, you can usually find the answer to that question by looking at the indicator words. For instance, uh, premise indicator words are, are phrases like this, since, um, given that, right? So since Ben Roethlisberger is healthier than he ever has been, dot, dot, dot. Or given that the Steelers always have a good season right after they've had a bad season, we can conclude that the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. We can conclude that is a conclusion indicator word. Uh, the most common uh, of conclusion indicator words is probably the word thus. Thus, the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. Or therefore, the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. So, it's very important for us to identify what the argument is, and we do this by intuition, by asking what the main point of the passage is, by asking what the author's purpose is, um, by asking what the reasons or evidence are, if we're talking about premises, and uh, finally, by looking at the indicator words. And there's a good list, a good list of premise indicators and conclusion indicators in your text. Okay, now as I mentioned before, I didn't mention before that I'm a little sweaty, but as I mentioned before, there are two kinds of argument, inductive arguments and deductive arguments. And it's very simple to tell the difference between most inductive arguments and most deductive arguments. And it all comes down to what is the inferential claim. The inferential claim of an argument is the claim of how strong the evidence is uh, for the conclusion given the premises. Um, if an argument has an inductive inferential claim, the argument is basically saying, if these premises are true, it's probably the case that the conclusion is true. Um, with regards to a deductive inferential claim, the argument is claiming, if these premises are true, the conclusion absolutely has to be true. Um, let me give you a couple examples of, uh, of each of these. Uh, here's an argument that's deductive in nature. Right? Scott is unmarried. Scott is a male. A bachelor, by definition, is an unmarried male. Therefore, Scott is a bachelor. So, again, the first premise, Scott is unmarried. The second premise, Scott is a male. The third premise, a bachelor, by definition, is an unmarried male. The conclusion is that Scott is a bachelor. Now, this is a deductive argument because it's an argument based on a definition. And you can see that it's intended uh, to be deductive in nature by the fact that if those premises are true, the first, second, and third premise, there's absolutely no way to avoid the conclusion. And so this argument is set up in a certain logical way such that if the premises are true, the conclusion absolutely has to be true. It has kind of a formal structure to it. And our deductive arguments are always arguments of this sort. They have a certain formal or logical structure to them, or they're based on definitions, or they're based on mathematical, uh, mathematical formulas, or scientific laws, or something of that nature. Now, inductive arguments are um, much different from this, uh, and I've already given you uh, two of them. Um, first of all, we say Rochester has had temperatures at least as low as 25 degrees Fahrenheit every year for the past 50 years. Therefore, and we might even be inclined to say it is likely that, or it's probable that, Rochester will get down at least to 25 degrees Fahrenheit this winter. And so the nature of the inductive argument is that the inferential claim is saying, gosh, given this history of the past 50 years, it certainly seems likely that Rochester uh, will get cold again this winter and the temperature will be 25 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or, or uh, lower.